Good morning and happy Resurrection Day. It, it's Sunday and Christ is risen. He is risen and this is the day that we celebrate. This is the day that marks our Christianity, the very day that made us who we are, the very day that made us Christians and, what, and it defines who we are. It defines what we stand for. Our Christ came, our Savior, he came and he died. And they buried him, and, and we waited. And today he's risen. He is risen, and our sins are forgiven, and we can walk into eternity. That's the story that I want to hear. That's the story that I want to hear every single day. I want to know that story in and out, through and through. I want to know the story that saved me, the, the Christ. I want to know him. I want to know him and just him, his story and how he saved me. Tell me that story. Will you sing with me this morning? Will you worship with me this morning? Our risen God, our risen Christ, our risen Savior. Let's worship him together this, this morning. Tell me that story again.
just want to hear about your story, Lord. The story that saved me, that set me free, that says that I am no longer bound and I am no longer a slave because you've risen and set me free. Hallelujah, I am yours. And you unravel me with a melody and you surround me with a song, yes you do, of deliverance from my enemies, yes, until all my fears are gone. Your love has called my name And I've been born again Into your family Your blood, it flows through my veins said earlier because he is alive that he went on the cross he died but he rose again yesterday pastor don and i were able to watch a a play it was the story of jesus and as haley was singing the song it took me back to yesterday and when jesus went to pray to cast out the demons from the man that was had legions of demons and he, when you saw him before the prayer he was just tormented, and he was just, just, just couldn't stay still. He was just in torment. 
And after Jesus got out of the boat and went and prayed for him, he had such peace. And he wanted to go travel with Jesus. And Jesus says, no, you stay here and go back and tell, let, tell your family that you've been set free. And some of you watching this today, you need to know that just let Jesus set you free from all the torment and all the pain that you're going through because he is alive. He's not dead. He's alive. And I was thinking with all this that we've been going through and not able to come to church. This is the first Easter we've had with a, not a full house and just a few of us that's here. But aren't you glad that wherever you're at, he is with you. If you allow him to be there, his presence are with you. And if you need to pray, if you need to talk to the Lord today, you can do that right there. I am so glad that he's not confined to a church, but he lives in the hearts of people that, care, that love him and have invited him in. So today, we're doing the best we can, like all the other churches, just bringing the story of Jesus to you today and giving you hope that he is alive and that he is ruling and reigning and he's in charge. At this time, um, if we were having a regular service, we'd be asking uh, our members to join us to in, with giving their tithe and their offering, their uh, media support. And since we don't have a congregation here today, we're going to ask you to go to spiritoftruth.com. And uh, you can make a t contribution on that or go to um, download our Spirit of Truth app. Maybe some of you have never done that. We would like to encourage you to go to the Spirit of Truth um, app, download it, and keep in touch with us. And there's a lot of good information on there. And, but we appreciate everyone that has given and kept the church doors going and our local church. You know, everything is good. We're good. Church is good. God's good. Haley's good. Everybody's good. And we cannot wait to join with you again because we miss you. Um, we were talking about Sunday school this week, and some of the children have sent word, we miss Sunday school. We want to get back. And isn't that the heart of all of us? We want to get back to worship together. We're worshiping at home, but we'll be so glad to get back together and worship. But to, this morning... Uh, we just appreciate everyone that would go to uh, that app or to um, spiritoftruth.com and make a donation today to just help us, and we appreciate it so very much. Well, I'm excited because Pastor Don has had lots of time <laughs> to study and get the message for you for this morning, but how many knows we know the message is that he is alive and he's not dead. If you look at this beautiful cross back here, a lot of churches have crosses hanging in them this morning, but none of them have Jesus on them because he's not there, is he? He's right here. Aren't you happy for that? Aren't you excited? Well, I would say give Pastor Don a nice hand as he comes, but you can do that right there in your home. But let's give Pastor Don a nice hand as he comes. Thank you so much. You know, we've read the story. I love the song that Haley was singing. Just, I want to hear it again. Well, I've heard it. No, 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 no. It gets sweeter every time. This uh, week has been very special going back through Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and just looking at the way they uh, portrayed the, the day of his resurrection. So many people were involved. We talked last week about the awful suffering. We talked about the, the pain, the agony, the, the torment, the brow that was uh, cloaked with a crown of thorns and beat into his skull. On his back that was ripped off, his hands and his feet were impaled, and then they pierced him in the side. It was just an un unbelievable amount of suffering that he went through, and as Kathy said, I love the cross that's empty. I love the fact that he was willing to do it. It breaks our heart that he had to do it, but that's the kind of love that he had for you. There's so many people that were involved, and it, it seems like the thing that keeps coming up in my spirit, we were listening, as Kathy said, they had a special presentation about Jesus. And I noticed that one of the, the high priests, one of the main leaders in, in the ministry of that day in the Jewish sphere, uh, one of the men stood up and, and really said, I, I believe that Jesus is, is God in the flesh. I believe that. And it was nearly exercised because they didn't want it to be that way. They'd watched every miracle. They heard about all the resurrections. And, and still they chose not to allow him to be Lord. Only in their life. He's still Lord everywhere he's received. 
The Bible said that Nicodemus was one of those men that was in the ministry, the high priest. But at the same time, he stood up for the Lord. For a while, he was only, uh, if you will, a disciple in secret. He would come at night when nobody's watching. But he loved him, and he knew who he was, and he wanted him. The other figure that comes to mind is uh, Joseph of Arimathea, the man that literally offered to give Jesus his tomb. The Bible said that Joseph, not only did he go to the burial place, but uh, the writer said that he poured upon his body, upon the cloth, that the, the, the burial cloth, a hundred pound weight of oil, frankincense, myrrh, exotic spices, uh, compared to the woman that brought one, one little pound of ointment, a spice to anoint Jesus for his death. She recognized he is going to die for me, and I want to be involved in that. I'm so glad I know him. I'm so glad I recognize that he is real. I said to myself, I'm so thankful. Most of all, I'll be very blunt. I'm most thankful for what the Lord has done for me, that I know him. I'm glad that he has moved in my wife and our children and our family, and I'm glad that we know him. So it's my job, heavy upon my spirit, to reach out and let everybody that is around me know Jesus is real. He didn't just die and stay dead. He rose again, victorious over what? Death hell and the grave. He conquered death. And if you receive him, you'll never die. Oh, you'll transfer from this old dirt house into the heavenly house, and that will be forever your new home. Then he also killed hell. No power of hell in any dimension or whatever you think, uh, feel like that is. It doesn't matter anymore. I'm not going there. I don't have to participate in that thing. Worry and fear is not a part of my life. And then they may lay me in the ground, but I will not be there. I will be absent from my body and present with the Lord. And you got to understand, we're blessed to know this old, old story. I want to tell it again. I want to excite you about the promise of resurrection. We talk so much about the suffering and the pain and the death. Very little is talked about the burial, that, that day between Good Friday and just whatever it is, Saturday. I really believe that more was done or as much done when he was in the grave, conquering death, hell, and the grave. Do you realize that when he's on the cross... He had never known sin, ever. The Bible said he became sin. He took on all sin and every filthy, rotten, horrible, sinful thing that every man did and said, I'll take that upon my body and I'll pay for it to make it clean as a driven snow. When I was looking at this, I realized that he was literally carrying the weight of the world upon his shoulder and he became sin that knew no sin so we could become his righteousness. That, that's kind of hard to imagine because he gave you his righteousness. I want you to listen with me right now. The Bible lets us know it, and I'm going to declare it in, in a nutshell. From the time that Adam and Eve decided they didn't want to obey God, sin came alive. Jesus was paying for the sin of Adam and Eve as he's suffering. He paid for the murder between Cain and Abel as he suffered. He, the Bible also lets us know that one of the greatest kings of all uh, Jewish history, King David, got to a place in his life where he became lax and found out that there was a young lady that was taking a bath and he had an adulterous affair with her. Come to find out she's going to carry his baby. And so David, this formerly righteous and precious man with great integrity now, kills his own friend to cover up his sin. Had no clue that one day Jesus was going to pay to restore him as though it had never happened. We talk about all the different sins of man that laid down upon his shoulders. We realize that he is the sin of every sinner, and he paid for that. Sometimes we don't realize that he didn't just lay down. He got up. I am so glad he got up, and somebody right now, he's going to get inside of you and get up inside of you. He's going to conquer everything behind you. He's going to get rid of all the past, and he's going to be restoration. One of the greatest uh, writers in the New Covenant wrote most of the New Covenant, if you will. The man that was Paul Saul. Here's a man that was imprisoning Christians, killing Christians, doing everything he could to destroy the credibility of Jesus Christ. And one day the Lord appeared to him and caused him to realize, I am going to die for you. I did die for you. I already did it, but it's going to come alive as though I'm freshly dead and buried and resurrected inside of your life. I just got you to know that everything that Paul Saul did, in sin, Jesus washed it by his own blood. Sometimes we don't realize all the grace and all the mercy. I, I love the stories of the healing of Jesus and it tells us that he not only healed the demoniac that was filled with demons, but at the same time he was planning to pay for it. 
Anytime I go to a restaurant, I really in the back of my mind am planning to pay for it. There's been a few times somebody would come in the restaurant and, and they would say, uh, Pastor Don is over there. I want to pay for his meal. And I didn't know that or I probably wouldn't have got a burger. I probably would have got a steak. It's just true. Kathy and I have been married for many, many years and sometimes we had to look at the menu very closely to find out what we possibly could afford. You probably can't afford the iced tea with it. We'll just get with the main part and drink water because we knew that, listen, we would have to pay. Did you know that when Jesus healed the sick, he knew that I'll pay for this miracle very soon. All the prophets prophesied every miracle, every resurrection in the old covenant, every phenomenal thing that God did. He did it knowing that one day Jesus would pay for that miracle to happen. Wow. He decided that he was going to take on the load and the sin of the world. When the demoniac was set free, and I love the depiction they shared yesterday of a man that was crazy with insanity, with demonology going on inside of his spirit. And the Lord just reached out and, and opened his arms to the man, and he received him. doesn't say what he prayed. He just wanted him. He came running to Jesus. He, he, he couldn't even utter right words, but he wanted him. Do you know the Lord knows what you're feeling and what you're craving and what you desire of him more than the words that you can say in eloquent speech? No, he wants to know that you want him. And the Lord says that when he set that man free, he wanted to leave everything behind and he wanted to follow Jesus. But listen closely. The Lord said, no, go back and tell your family and your friends the wonderful things that I have done for you. So the man went from demoniac to an evangelist in a moment. Well, who paid for that? Jesus knew that in a very short amount of time, he was going to the cross to pay for the deliverance, for the healing. When the woman came dying, if you will, bleeding out with the issue of blood, she touched the hem of his garment and he healed her. He was going to pay for that miracle for that woman that was bound 12 years. The same day Jesus went to the house of Jairus and his daughter was laying there dead and Jesus raised her from the dead knowing that in a few weeks or whatever he was going to pay for her resurrection. We also understand there was a man named Lazarus that died and was rotting in his tomb and the Lord went by and said, Lazarus, come forth. And he knew that within about probably about 10 days from there or a week, he was going to pay for the resurrection. He was going to pay in his own body. So every miracle in the old covenant, every miracle up until his moment of arriving on the planet, every miracle that he did, he was going to pay for it in his own blood. He was going to pay for your sin and my sin, your victory and my victory. I just got to tell you, I am glad that the blood didn't just come and save me but it stuck with me it stays with me and if I tend to fall in weakness or a doubt or a worry comes that blood just resurrects and gets up inside of me and says I got this I will wash away that fear I'll wash away that sin I'll wash away that going astray I'll wash it all away you know the people like blind Bartimaeus that got to see the lepers that got to go back to their family totally clean all of these miracles were paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ I don't think anybody can fathom the greatness of all of that. And then my mind goes back to something that I've been holding on to so heavily because some scripture is hard. Did you know that if Adolf Hitler would have come and said, Jesus, I don't know what I was thinking. I was religiously confused. I slaughtered six million of your precious children. Will you forgive me? It's hard to wrap our brain around it, but he's never said no. Some of the men like Jeffrey Dahmer that have done horrible things in American culture. Unbelievable sin. If they would have come to Jesus and said, forgive me, he would have. There's a malefactor, probably a murderer, hanging beside Jesus on one side. And there's another murderer on the other side. And one of them said, hey, if you really are the son of God, just get down. You know, sometimes we're so stuck on our religious questions and fears. We can't give it up even when we're ready to die. We're still willing to abandon our salvation out of an attitude. The other one looked over and argued with the man and said, Don't you understand? We deserve to be here. But he doesn't. He's done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come to your kingdom. And Jesus instantly was paying for his salvation as he's dying. Listen closely. Jesus said, Today, this day, you will be with me in paradise. He paid for it instantly. The other man could have had the same gift, but like the high priest that rejected Jesus, that 
sold him out, the Judases that sold him out that wouldn't receive what he was. All under the same condemnation only because they would not accept the blood that Jesus shed. My heart has been grieving for several weeks for some people that I, I love and know I'm praying for that have once known about him. They once attended service. They once were involved in some level. And now for some reason, like Judas, they decided, I've, I've been with him three and a half years, but I decide that I really don't want him. I'd rather have the money or I'd rather have the fame. or I've got an attitude. Something in my mind says I want to betray him. Nicodemus, the high priest, recognizing that They'll kick me out of priesthood now. They won't allow me back into the temple because now I've accepted Jesus Christ. It cost him something. It cost him his job. But he also realized that this job is not going to be doing anything anymore after he dies and resurrects. Because now he is the divine ministry and people don't have to come to us. They can go directly to him. Nicodemus and also Joseph of Arimathea. These are two of the most notable men that were there begging the body of the Lord saying, Can we have his dead body? Joseph put his body in his own tomb. I want to say to you, somebody listening today, you need to bring Jesus home to your death house. If you're dead in the trespass of sin, if you're dead in your hurts and your wounds and your unforgiveness and your anger, if you haven't let the Lord come into your grave, that's what really this is. It becomes a grave if the Lord is not alive in us. We're simply slowly dying. But if we allow the Lord to come in, we begin to live. I'm not just Don Young, a man that's going to live when I die for eternity. I'm alive right now. I walked in these doors thanking God. I, I, I've wept. I've laughed. I've celebrated because he's more than just the story. He is the essence of the story. He's the reason for the story. That's why I want to hear about him again. Every time I hear it, I want to sing a hallelujah. Every time I hear about he, what he did for me I want to say you know they talked about his death and they talk about his burial but I know I know one day he also got up victorious over everything that held me in captivity because when he was in that grave he was carrying your sin your damnation your eternal sorrow he was carrying all of that upon his body but on that third day he got up he got up over all the power that held him down he literally was willing to conquer your death and mine he was willing to conquer hell yours and mine he was willing to conquer graves. Now I can go by the graveyard and read the names of people that I helped to lay in the ground, but I can shout, they're not there. They're not there. Their body is there where they used to live, but they moved out of that apartment to the place where they're going to live in the presence of the Lord forever. you got to realize when Jesus got out of the grave, he was getting ready to ascend in 40 days back to the Father. He was going to meet that thief on the cross he had just saved at the last minute. He was going to receive the, the woman that was caught in the very act of adultery that he had forgiven. He was going to be able to know her for eternity as Savior and as somebody that received him. Well, can God forgive anything? Anything. Well, yeah, but I've been too bad. Look at me. No, nobody is that bad. He came to seek and look after. He came to find the ones that are lost. I love the writer of the song that said, I once was lost, but now I'm found. You don't go back and think about the lost. You think about the found. I'm glad that I'm saved today. My heart is breaking because there's some that hated Jesus even in leadership. There's some that spat upon him and buffeted him with their fists. That Oh, a week ago they're saying Hosanna. But now they're saying kill him. Where were the ones that he had healed? Where are the ones that he had cleansed? Where are the ones that he had raised? Where are the ones hanging around the cross? Even his own disciples, Scripture said they would, they would scatter because they were fearful. God knew that in advance. His mother's there. The woman that Jesus had delivered from demons. The other Mary Magdalene was there. John was there. His beloved disciple was there. But we don't have any record of other family or friends or those that had received notable miracles for three and a half years. Some out of fear because they knew that if they're killing him, they're probably going to come after us. The Bible literally says in the book of John that the disciples, you can read it, uh, the different gospels, but it said the disciples, after they heard the story that he raised from the dead, they couldn't believe it, so they just went back home. I want to tell you, this story of Jesus is the most powerful message in the world, and yes, unless you want to believe it, it's hard to believe. It's hard to believe that a man that is laying in a grave dead can get up on his own accord. Nobody else has been able to do that. When I needed a Savior, I realized now by looking back that nobody else could have saved me. 
So God wrapped himself in human flesh through the womb of Mary and became a man. Oh, they criticized him, all of his ministry. They hated him, all of his ministry. Even the ones that he had blessed came back to, say, kill him. He knew that. He knew the depravity of man, and he knew the suffering. But when he got up from the grave, all the sin of humanity, everyone that would believe from then on, can have the free gift of eternal life. I don't have to go into a building or to a certain person to be saved. I can fall on my face at home. I, I can get up right there where I've been working. Look at me. I can get, uh, come awake in the back alley of my sin. Fall down in front of the trash cans and just lift my hands and say, Lord, forgive me. And instantly that blood continues to wash. Nobody can do that for you. That's why it's so important today that we recognize he is not still in the grave. He arose. I, I got to say, it, he got up. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. He conquered your fear, your worry, your stress. And I know right now for a, a, about a month we've been hearing the reports of people around the world, starting in China, coming all around to many nations where so many people are dying and family members and friends or loved ones are being affected by it. Got a call from out of state. Just last night somebody said, I, I have the virus and, and, and I'm about to conquer it. I'm just about to complete it. Uh, come tomorrow, I'll be able to get back in public again. It, it's a, an invisible thing. It's, it's something we can't see but isn't it amazing how many people are troubled and confused and scared and worried over an invisible virus why is it hard to believe in invisible blood in a savior why is it hard to believe in invisible forgiveness because the enemy would like to blind our mind and our heart from knowing he got up I think the most powerful thing had to be when Mary went to the tomb and when she got there, she didn't know. She wondered, where has he gone? And she thought Jesus was a gardener. And, and she said, sir, if you've taken him away, tell me where he is so I can come and get him. What are you going to do with a dead body? I'm sure the thought hadn't crossed her mind, but she didn't want them to hide him or defile him or lie about him. And Jesus simply spoke to her and he said, Mary... And instantly, her eyes were open, and she said, Rabboni, my teacher. He said, you can't touch me right now because I haven't ascended to my father. I'm still spirit. But you go tell my disciples and Peter. I always wondered why and Peter until I realized Peter is the one that three times denied that he even knew him and swore that he didn't know him. Make sure you tell Peter, I'm forgiveness. They got to the room after that, and when Jesus appeared to them, the Bible said he'd already appeared to the eleven, but uh, or to the ten. But Thomas wasn't there, and they told Thomas he rose from the dead. And Thomas said, and, and it explains there's a reason for that. We all have sometimes our little questions and doubts, and you got to prove it to me. You can't prove it; you got to want to believe it. The Bible said the next time when he came to the disciples, Thomas was there this time, and he said, "Thomas, come over here. I want you to put your finger in the prints in my hand and put your." Finger in my side where the spear ripped me open. Look at my feet. Thomas looked at him and he said, my Lord and my God. He had to have extra proof. He had to have the Lord go an extra mile. I believe today on this broadcasting, one of the main reasons that we've assembled together, the television staff and the ministry here, the worshipers were here for one thing, and that's to remind you one more time. We're here to tell you again what he did for you we're here to tell you that he paid the price and if you've like i have wondered and questioned and doubted some things if you have a thomas spirit a doubting spirit he's letting us come again do it again tell you again i love the song and it was perfectly timed of the lord that Haley sang. tell me again there's times that when we're in fear or doubt or we're questioning a scripture or something we can Go back to the word and he'll tell us again. He never gets tired of the song, never gets old. He wants you to know that he loves you. I can imagine when Judas was so hung up on carrying the bag and the money that he could get sidetracked. And even though he saw the miracles and watched the lives transformed and watched the blessings for three and a half years side by side with Jesus. But his focus was not on the healing and the miracles and the salvation Really didn't hear probably a lot of what Jesus said because his focus was on the money. People would come, I'm sure the Bible records some that would come and they would sustain and give money so the ministry and the disciples could eat. And we understand that. Doesn't talk a lot about it. But the Bible said Jesus is the one that allowed Judas 
to carry the bag. I believe he gave him three and a half years to get over himself financially and the greed that literally became a selling point. He betrayed Jesus for money. I I don't know of anybody that would literally sell Jesus for money in, in an open fashion. But if you deny him and would rather have something more than him, whatever that is, I came to tell you again, Thomas, the nails are still in his hands spiritually. The scar in his side spiritually. Somebody said, well, wouldn't it heal up? Yeah, but the theory is that if you can still see that his hands were pierced, his feet were pierced. If you can still see the scar in his side, you'll know that it's really him and he really did what he said. And he didn't just die, but he rose to give you back your life. Somebody has gone astray. I I believe the most important thing today is not how long the virus is going to last. It's not about American economy. It's not how they're starting to tell churches, we'll fine you if you go to church. They're trying to bring pressure. There's more than all of that. God is beginning to do some things in the world today to awaken us to realize the seriousness of a desire to be together in the family of God. I've never in my life missed the body of Christ as much. Last week we had a couple, three days where I stood out under the sign and people would come driving up and I'd get to see them through the window and pray for them. And it was beautiful. People came from some of them a hundred mile journey just to come. And for prayer, one family came in from Columbus and they said, we just wanted to see you. It's been too long. I understand that. I believe the body of Christ is starting to realize who we are. It's not just flesh and blood, but we are the body of Christ. Times I need you to smile at me. Sometimes I need you to lift up my hands. And sometimes I need you to speak an encouraging word. And sometimes I think you need me to say that to you. But if you've got into a doubtful dissertation to your place in your life where you really believe, I I need to know for sure that Jesus is alive. i got to tell you, it's not just because that cross is empty, but the cross that was there. They took him off there. They put him in a tomb not to stay forever. He went for a three-night vacation, if you will into another man's tomb knowing that on the third day I'm going to get myself up. I'm going to get myself up and I'm going to come out of this tomb. I'm going to tell my disciples now now you can go into all the world and you can tell everybody what I did. Everybody that receives and somebody said well is it that easy? Yes it is. He didn't say you have to be a great orator. He said go into all the world. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. Well I can't do that. Yes he can through you still do all things and then he said Everyone that believes on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. I love it. And he talked about baptism, which is heavy because he's saying, I want to let the old, ugly, sinful, depraved you die. And when you rise in baptism, you'll realize in the world around you will realize, I have washed you and made you a new creation. Somebody today needs to recognize that you're not going to want a Barabbas spirit. You want Jesus. I can't imagine saying, well, Barabbas, we'd rather have him than Jesus. But they wanted to have things their way. They wanted things their way. They wanted things their way. Can you imagine what Barabbas must have felt like when he heard, see that man over there that we're beating and spitting on and criticizing? He's going to die, so you don't have to. He's setting you free, Barabbas. He'll pay for this within hours. But even you can be free. I want to ask you one more time. Over 50 years of asking, I want to ask again. You know, this is is a very lonely Easter. Look around in an empty building. I look around. The streets are almost empty because people are confined. But I believe with all my heart, somebody today is going to make up your mind to come back home. Thomas is saying, you know, I I can't believe that he rose from the dead after all he knew. I, I just can't believe that. Let's not criticize him too much. There's times it's hard to believe. But I got in my scripture and I realized that Thomas came back to the 12. Oh, they were in hiding because they were afraid the Romans were going to kill all of them just to get rid of the essence of Jesus' ministry. Thomas came walking in the room and this time the Lord just appeared. And come over here, Thomas. I want to prove to you one more time. Should he ever have to prove himself again? No. But I feel like somebody right now, you've gone astray. When the scripture talks about the prodigal son that went off to the hog pen and wasted all of his life and his money on riotous living, there's a reason for that. There's sometimes that this world has an allure that is so strong, it's more powerful than God's love as far as you're concerned. It's more powerful to you than 
even his blood as far as you're concerned. Finally, the Bible said that when he awakened, came to himself, he said, I can go back to my father. And if he doesn't receive me on the highest level as a son, I, I'll get to be around him and he'll take care of me. God doesn't receive anybody back as a slave. He never receives anybody to remain as a sinner. He takes you as you are and makes you a new creation. For all of you that are watching here and everywhere, would you do this with me? Would you bow your heads together? And for somebody I'm speaking to right now, you know who you are. Please, please don't let his death be in vain. Please don't let all that suffering, the resurrection, the greatest miracle proof that he's real. Nobody can get up on their own from death. He did that so that even the religious system and every skeptic and doubter would see him again. And he stayed around for 40 days so that everybody had a chance to know what you can know today. I aim to forgive you. Pray it with me. Lord Jesus, I believe you died and I believe on this Resurrection Sunday that you'd like to come alive inside of me. There's some death inside of me. There's some sin that has robbed me. There's some flesh carnality. There's some flesh sins. And I sometimes don't think I can conquer that, but you can conquer my sin. And if I'll call upon your name, I'll be saved. So I'm calling Jesus. Have mercy upon me, a sinner. I believe that you died in my behalf to pay for my death penalty and pay for eternal life. My death for yours, yours for mine. Thank you, and I receive that gift. Beginning today, I will follow you all the days of my life. Holy Spirit, fill me with the power to say no to flesh and yes to you. If you spoke those words to him in faith, you're no longer a slave to sin. You are a child of God. Now when we talk about the resurrection, you can tell somebody, he not only got up over there on the other side of the world, but one day on a Sunday, he got up inside of me. He's alive inside of me and he'll strengthen me for every situation that I encounter. He's the healer. He's the provider. And today I call him my Lord. Why don't you take just a moment and thank him because he paid it all and now you have received it. Not like a Judas that walked away. Not like all those leadership of ministry that sold him and walked away. But it's time to come to him and say, I choose today. And I believe this for me and for my house that we will serve the Lord. I commit you into the hand of the Lord for safekeeping. This ministry is here. We talk about going online because we're available to you 24-7. We're available to you to pray for you. We're here available to encourage, to strengthen you. But maybe like Thomas, you just need to be reminded. Well, the Lord is reminding you today. He wants to get up on the inside and live in you forever and forever. Very thankful for this privilege today. And there's a thousand messages I could give probably concerning this and not cover all the bases. For all of the 353 prophecies he fulfilled. For what? To prove to you. To prove to you one more time. I want to come alive. I feel like this is a celebration day. Somebody's dancing somewhere. Somebody's got hands lifted in a a private bedroom or in a living room. Or somebody, wherever you are, you're able to celebrate. That's why we live to tell you. He died, but he got up. And he did it just for you. Mr. Haley's going to come back and share a song that I believe will strengthen and encourage and inspire your heart. And in this season, would you take a little time now that most of us are confined at home more than ever? Would you take a little time to get into the Word and just listen to some gospel songs and praise Him? Even if you're not a great singer, sing anyway. But most of all, pray and seek Him and love Him. Just tell Him how great He is and how much you love Him. We love you so much. We miss you and we will see you soon. And we just thank God that He's put our hearts together. So begin to celebrate. He got up, and he's alive, and he's alive forevermore. Haley, as you come, God bless you. Who taught the sun where to stand in the morning? And who told the ocean you can only come? And who showed the moon where to hide till evening? Whose words alone can catch a falling star?
Peace.